Good evening, everyone. It is the 5th of July, 2022. You are here for a special called session of the athens Clark County Mayor and Commission, where we have a single item to consider. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and begin with a roll call of the membership. Um, Commissioner Davenport. Here. Commissioner Parker. Here. Commissioner Link. Commissioner Wright. Commissioner Denson. Here. Commissioner Houle. <laughs> Commissioner Edwards. Here, present. Uh, Commissioner Byers. Here. Uh, Commissioner Thornton. Here. Commissioner Hamby. Here. All right, we have a quorum, so we'll go ahead and begin. Uh, I do need a motion for suspension of rules. Do I hear such a motion? So moved. Second. All right, I've got a motion from Commissioner Myers and a second from Commissioner Davenport for suspension of rules. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? All right, hearing none, motion carries. All right, we have a, a single item on the agenda tonight, um, which is a change regarding funding for the Classic Center uh, Arena construction project. And I'm going to turn it over to Manager Williams, uh, who's going to introduce a short presentation and provide us with some context. Thank you, Mayor. And if I might, just context for folks that are tuning in. Uh, so with the Classic Center Arena, it was a SPLOS project, uh, SPLOS 2020. And uh, the commission approved uh, a construction contract with the contractor when we were 75% of the way through the design. And this is something that's done when, you, when you're trying to move a project along uh, fairly quickly. And so a change order was always contemplated at some point to, to uh, once the, the project was fully designed at 100%. That's part of the request that you're being considered, uh, being asked to consider tonight. Secondly, uh, there was uh, a good deal of rock found uh, that has to be uh, excavated in order for the foundations to be installed. And uh, that comes at an extra cost as well once the quantities were determined. Uh, so those two make up the bulk of the change order along with some items that the Classic Center Authority would like to consider. The reason for a special call meeting is that the rock was being excavated uh, quicker than we had thought. It was going to go beyond the approved contingencies, hence your approval was needed to not halt the project and incur some costly delays. And so that's the reason for the special call meeting and this being um, two weeks ahead of when you were asked to actually approve it. And so with that, uh, we have uh, uh, Keith Sanders, Marcus Vess, who represent our, our project managers, and Paul Kramer, Executive Director of the Classic Center Authority, to give you some further context uh, by means of a brief presentation. So with that, I'll turn it over to Keith or Marcus. And, and I believe Paul's going to kick us off there. So. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say, I think I'm going to kick it off and then uh, turn it back to Keith, if I may. Um, just this particular slide, I think, gives you a pretty good representation uh, that the arena is under contract and certainly uh, has been making really good progress uh, the blasting of the rock is going really well. And, uh, and as you can see, by virtue of the trucks, uh, the hauling off of the debris and whatnot is, uh, is going quite rapidly. Um, we also, uh, just a reminder that we are under contract with Jay Dunn, as Blaine had mentioned. So we have already begun to procure things like you see in the image of the... Um, uh, the piping as well as the steel has already been ordered uh, as well. If we go on to the next slide. Just a, a reminder about the budget overall. Uh, in, in January, uh, you approved an overall budget of $135 million. Uh, currently, the budget summary you see before you uh, totals out at 132 uh, million four hundred and forty five thousand one hundred and ten and that's with um, 
all of the things that have been baked in, not only for the contractor, but also the design uh, team and the uh, consultants that, that have gotten us to this point. The actual way that we will pay for that uh, is through a number of different sources. Uh, the SPLOS that was mentioned, 33 million. Uh, the first revenue bond of 49.4 million. And then the other confirmed funds, uh, 7.7, which is really made up of 5 million directly from the Classic Center Authority and uh, 2.7 million that comes in from Levy, uh, our, our in-house caterer, is contributing to this uh, as well. And then we also have uh, direct upfront funding payments that are anticipated from the three different parcels of land that will be developed, uh, roughly a million to a million and a half for each of those three. And then the uh, Classic Center is currently under a capital campaign where we're aspiring to raise 5.5 million, uh, but we have 1.5 in the funding. We also have a million for a scoreboard um, that is coming in from our ECHL team. And then both the Ice Dogs and the ECHL combined would be another 500,000 our ticketing company is 500000 And then we've applied for uh, state ARPA funding of $14 million. Uh, we've also, subsequent to this, have applied for two other um, grant applications directly from the federal government. But uh, while we've applied for a significant amount, uh, we're only counting on, on $5 million in total bringing us to the other $12 million uh, from the uh, additional private funding. And then the uh, final piece would be the second bond of $30 million. Uh, and that would sound out at $132,445,145,000. Uh, uh, to be exact. Next slide. And this is where I toss it back to Keith, I believe, who will take you through the actual change order. Okay. Thank you, Paul. So we did talk about this uh, at the last work <laughs> session somewhat, and but I wanted to get this back in front of you, and it's the proposed change order. And it's exact, the table here is exactly what's in the agenda report, and the facts and issues that are in the agenda report are referenced here in the table uh, to easily cross-reference those. So uh, as Blaine mentioned, there is a... a 2.7 million of this uh, change order is for costs that uh, were anticipated to be uh, saved as we went through the value engineering stages uh, early before the GMP was signed. There was um, lots of redesign that was uh, done in the uh, just before it was signed, and there were some items that were anticipated to be savings. And maybe as we got through the 100% design, the savings weren't as big as the, that was anticipated. Uh, in some cases, those savings were saved. Uh, uh, there was savings, but maybe not quite as big. In some cases, material cost had gone up and, and things weren't, uh, we just didn't have those savings there that was that was anticipated. So that's the 2.7. Uh, 4.9 of this, or almost 5 million of this, is rock and contaminated soil removal. Um, about 2.5 million roughly each of those would go into the owner controlled contingency, which is what we're currently paying for the rock and remove a lot of. Uh, and this is for also disposal of contaminated soil. Uh, removal and replacement of soil was always part of the contract, but having to deal with uh, the contaminated uh, material and soils uh, in a landfill, um, that part, because we didn't know how much was contaminated based on the previous, uh, all the site work that had been done previous uh, that was included as uh, we're putting that in as an allowance for the, the landfill cost. And so the rock removal is also in this as well as any associated general conditions for um, additional time that's needed. Then there's a, a $500,000 allowance request and that's for the option to have money available if, if a opportunity presents itself 
that is financially uh, beneficial to ACC Gov for accelerating the schedule. You know, every day that the project is not finished is a day there's not an event or revenue being generated. So uh, we don't know what those options are. Many times uh, those might become, might present themselves in something that has a very short window of opportunity to seize on it, to, to, to make that uh, call. And that would be something that um, we asking for that allowance to be there for that. And that would be, we would work certainly with Blaine and uh, American Commission and there's a, as those opportunities arise to, to document and, and determine what the best benefit ratio was. And then the other two uh, that the Classic Center Authority has requested, and I put the pictures in the in this slide of the, the renderings of the, the building with and without the canopy, um, the, as you can see on that uh, south facing facade. Uh, on the bottom picture, the canopy has been removed so that you can see what that would look like. And then the top picture has that. Um, if you know, that was removed during the VE, but the request is, is to put that back. If it is going to be added back, now would be the time to do it. It would be very expensive to try to come back uh, years from now uh, and add that in the future. And the same with the seating. Uh, re there's a request to put those back to the original quality that was specified versus the plastic. Again, you could, in, in theory, change out the seating in the future. Uh, but you would have that sunk cost of what you pay for the seating today uh, that would be, uh, in essence, wasted if you wanted to replace them with upgraded seats in the future. Um, so, again, those are the two. That totals $8.9 million. Uh, the original contract GMP was signed at $102.4 million, uh, although Merit Commission had approved uh, $107 million. Uh, so, the change order and what was executed gets us to the uh, 111 million 350 thousand, and if you take off the 107 that Mayor Commission previously approved, that gets us to about a 4.3 million dollar uh, change order, which is just slightly over four percent of the uh, original approved GMP amount. And with that, I give it back to Paul. All right. Um, the other thing we wanted to update you on was the idea of the special district. Last time I came before you, we had talked about doing a special district with hotels only. Um, after further discussion with our board, our board has uh, pulled that offer back. Uh, we, we don't think that's a good idea. We think that uh, a better idea may be to do the special district using um, – the special district uh, only on those new developments that we are out for bid on right now. We have talked to those developers and we know that that is something that is palatable to them. And we feel that these three parcels would not have come about without the arena going in. So um, if you'll advance to the next slide for me, Keith, The second bond, uh, which will be coming before you in, in August, then would be paid back with, again, those three parcels. Now, these uh, figures are in addition to those advanced figures that we had talked about earlier. These are the um, annual payments for the air rights uh, for the senior condo or the hotel and for the uh, hotel condo concept. Um, in addition to that, we have the Classic Center making payments of 125000 annually, and then our naming rights coming in at 450, and then the projected increase of just our portion of the hotel-motel tax uh, increment. It goes up a little bit every year, so we have pledged that back to the project to pay back the bonds. The special district on only those three parcels is expected to drive $280,000. And then uh, to complete that, we would add a 50 cent ticket fee on over 300,000 tickets that are anticipated being sold in the arena annually, um, giving us the funding that would be needed uh, with, the, uh, with the second bond to get the $30 million. 
If you go on to the next. This slide just again uh, is emphasizing that um, even with this change order, we have remained under the $135 million threshold that was approved. Um, and it outlines all of the dates that will be coming up in order to hit uh, your approval of the second bond by August 2nd so that we can close this bond on September 14th, providing us the necessary funds as this project continues to move forward that would be required uh, for us to continue to pay JE Dunn and not incur uh, additional charges. And I believe that is it other than question and answer. All right. Uh, any questions from members of the body? Let's see, Commissioner Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had several, I guess, small questions, but they kind of add up to um, a su substantial part of the funds that we are being asked to approve this evening. Um, I just wanted to clarify that we are being asked to approve the funds for the nicer seating and the canopy this evening. So, yeah. Yes, and uh, if I may, a little about the canopy. The canopy is not just an aesthetic uh, piece, though I think it looks awful without it. It also uh, will help us save energy and a considerable amount of energy, as that is our south-facing side. So that canopy would block the sun of the glass that uh, is going in that area. Okay. Um, was that also outlined at all in the agenda item that we were presented with? I, I, so, I, just, yeah. I just see it listed as an aesthetic addition or describes as such, and I think in our facts and issues. But in addition to that, um, I wanted to ask a question about the delay claims that are discussed in history item number 32. So there are 400, roughly $400,000 in claims that have not been approved, that are under review by our outside counsel and have not been approved yet, and an additional 400000 that are anticipated but not yet had claims filed for them. Is that correct? That's correct, and that is part of the additional, the cost of the time of the general contractors are doing their work. And that is factored into the amounts that were requested for the rock and soil um, allowance increases. So while they, they haven't, this final settlement hasn't occurred on them, they are part of those costs that have already been, been uh, factored in. But a part of those costs has not been fully reviewed or approved by outside counsel that has taken care of that for the local government. That's correct. The The claim is, is being reviewed. The 450 has been looked at by outside counsel and, and the, the whatever gets submitted in the future would also be looked at by outside counsel. And so tonight we're mostly discussing um, the need for them to move ahead right now. Um, and so we're talking, so here, so, but we're also now discussing things that, you know, came up in May that I think it was, was it the $450,000 and things that may occur in future? Um, and so I just wanted to point that out for my colleagues. I personally don't know how I feel about moving ahead with um, allocation of additional funds for a delay claim that hasn't been approved by the folks that review such. Um, and then I think those were my two main questions, but I just wanted to say that when we approved this as the part of the SPLOS package in 2020, no, 2019, um, w Commissioner Denson laid out several things that we hoped, we all hoped that would, um, would, improve public perceptions of the project. We did have substantial opposition to this making the final list, including benefits that were meant to enhance community well-being, things like childcare, other well-being benefits that were not spelled out explicitly um, at that time. But for us to go ahead and approve additional funding for nicer chairs and a canopy outside, especially if energy costs are now being ass asserted as a reason to move forward with that canopy, but those, to my knowledge, have not even been calculated. Um, is a matter of some concern to me. So if I may, I would like to make, well, um, I guess one last thing. Um, 
is w- without the delay claims hypothetically being um, funded tonight as a part of the total change order, would that disallow them at all from moving ahead with the um, ex- the excavation and the soil remediation that was the main reason that we came here this evening? Paul or Keith, can you just talk about the nature of how a delay claim is uh, is lodged and then managed? Sure. One thing, one thing I'd love to say, but I, I want to make sure I'm right. So, Keith, I'm going to say it, but I, I'd love for you to back me up on it. I think that outside counsel has looked at the first $400,000 claim, and they reviewed that carefully, and they did decide that that was appropriate to move forward. Is that right, Keith? Well, it, it's outside counsel would, I think, would really be the one to, uh, to comment on it. But yes, we did. Did uh, the answer was yes, that it was appropriate to move forward with uh, the payment of those as part of this change order summary. And so the claim is, is for additional contract time, predominantly for the rock and contaminated soil. We have built in general conditions within the contract amount uh, already. Those are based on the original contract time, so it's pretty easy to calculate and know what an additional day costs you in the terms of, of uh, every day has an associated cost with it. You have people on site uh, that are having to stay extra amount of time. Uh, you have the, the, there's lots of different costs. Uh, you know, some of them might sound trivial, but they start adding up from trailers to superintendents to all those different things that just really quickly a project this size add up. And so uh, that is included in the allowance and would be paid out of, of the allowance for that uh, rock and uh, contaminated soil that, that's part of this change order. Okay. I'm sorry to belabor these points. These do add up to $1.5 million, so I think it is important to discuss it is. But the, between the two issues that I've raised. So facts and issues number 32, where it says, in May, J. Dunn presented a claim notice to the total of four hundred ninety thousand um, dollars, and that this claim has been received but not yet approved, as is under review for compliance. So, is that is that the case or no? Because I, I guess I'm a little confused between what y'all I'm hearing y'all say and that laid out in the agenda item. It has been has been reviewed since since that since it was received. Uh, it was received reviewed and. Uh, discussed with outside counsel last week, and uh, if we didn't get that in the in the history items, I apologize. Okay, well, but, you know, if this is approved this evening, I think that the important thing to update. But all that said, to get back to my original point, we have a number of community well-being things that would be great for this um, community. Um, one where, you know, in a project like this, we are anticipating a lot of secondary economic benefits for folks, but not yet anything that is really concretely committed to with regards to primary benefits for people, things like childcare, et cetera. So we're asking for extra money for things that are nominally aesthetic, but no commitment has been made to anything else that would directly impact or benefit a lot of folks that are like frankly suffering in Athens. And so I would like to make a motion to approve, um, op, um, let's see, options A, B, and C um, with the um, minus the eight, what's it, um, $700,000 for the seating in the outdoor canopy. The motion on the floor, is there a second? All right, motion fails, fails for lack of a second. I'm going to move on to uh, Commissioner Myers. Okay, I I wanted to. Well, I was still thinking through that whole thing, um, and I I would second it for discussion purposes. Um, and I was not getting unmuted quick enough, quickly enough. Um, but I'm also trying to. I mean, I understood from this. Actually, going back, to, well, let's just follow up with the seating and the the, the uh, awning, uh, because my understanding, I mean, it, it, we, you're right, Commissioner um, Parker says we don't have any specifics on the cost savings. Um, I would assume there would be some, but it would be good to, 
have some kind of cost savings for that canopy. It does say provide shade on the building, and I know that's a, a major issue in uh, reducing energy costs in the summer. Um, so I think that kind of analysis is something we, we want to have as we're moving forward. Um, can you give any rationale for the padded seats rather than the other one? I mean, what, I mean, uh, we weren't involved in taking the padding off the seats, mm -hmm. but now they're back on the seats. So is there any uh, thought that, you anyway, know, how did that, that decision to add that back in come about? Good, Paul. I, I think it's really important that all of you recognize, and I think this was in the agenda item, that the original J.E. Dunn expectation of what it would cost to build this building was $115 million or somewhere in, in that range. And uh, Keith, myself, Marcus, uh, all of their team, we all were trying to value engineer and get this down to a project cost that fit within the budget confines that you approved and gave to us. And so we, in a very uh, deliberate way, we took out everything that could possibly come out to get this project down. Um, after a great deal of evaluation and going back through, uh, we know that we can deliver the kind of arena that is going to attract the right kind of events that are going to drive those community benefits that all of us want. Um, but uh, it, it would be pretty draconian to uh, go down to plastic seats with an arena of this caliber. And so by putting the uh, padding back on those seats, we would ensure ourselves that the end users that are going to come in there are going to want to be in there. And as you know, all of you know, it's that experience that the end user has that develops a reputation for the building today, tomorrow, and in the future. And so knowing that even by adding the padding back, we're still remaining under the budget threshold. That's why we've asked for this to go back in because we believe that it will make a big difference in the end experience to the end user and the guest. Thank you. I, I also want to follow that up since I was with the rest of my question, which was originally um, just to understand, I've been trying, I've, I spent a lot of time this afternoon looking at these numbers carefully to understand them. And um, in terms of the overall budget that we originally approved somewhere in here on a third, 134,000 and now something or, and some change, and now we're at 132.4. Um, how, I mean, we, we, we're seeing these inflationary costs with the construction and with JE Dunn, but we still have the equipment and furniture and the IT system and such at the original cost. So I, I assume, am I right? Am I correct, perhaps, in assuming that some of these things are going to be, uh, some of the prices will increase as well on some of these other areas? And if so, and are there any other things that are not included in the budget that we're, we're looking at um, that, that we're going to have to make sure that we have funds for? Um, is there, can you, can you comment on that at all, um, Paul? Yes, I can, um, but I, I don't know if Marcus might be a better uh, person to go through. I'll comment and then and then Keith or Marcus, I would ask that you correct me along the way. But I will tell you this, that because we have been super proactive and buying out many of these things on the front end and negotiating the prices on the front end, I think we are very confident in the 132, 380 uh, figure that we're putting before you today. I think it's a fair question to say, well, gosh, couldn't something escalate over time? And I think the answer is yes, it's possible. But I think we have proactively done a very good job of buying out all of these pieces, parts along the way. And we feel very confident at the 132 number. The only other numbers that, um, you know, might could come along, uh, 
down the road is uh, one, you know that we are doing solar as a part of this overall project. And uh, there is an opportunity, I think, that if we can, uh, not in this project, but uh, approach the other SPLOS funding that I know is there for sustainability, there is a chance that we could uh, contribute some capital funding for that and reduce our overall operating cost of the facility as we go forward. Um, but other than that, I, I really can't think of anything else that, that could come up. And even if you did that, I, I can think of one other uh, piece, which is now that we have taken out the uh, parking deck itself, we still uh, are receiving final pricing on the exiting capacity uh, of how we get folks on that east side uh, down to the street level. And um, while we have a design and we have preliminary pricing, I would say we don't have the final, final pricing on that yet at this time. But I'll turn it over to the engineers in case I forgot anything. Right. So I'll start with start okay. with the, oh, that that last one, the 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 stairs and bridge portion. That is in the hundred and thirty two million dollar budget that's before you. It's uh, item sixteen in the facts and issues. While we haven't priced it out and it is not in the J E Dunn contract, there is money in the uh, in that hundred and thirty two million dollar budget for that. Uh, some of the items that haven't been bought that are in that FF and E is you know kitchen equipment, uh, laundry equipment, uh, some signage and graphics, those sort of things that are still to be bought out more towards the end of the project. So uh, I think we have a, a sufficient allowance number in there based on what we know today, uh, including some general numbers for perhaps escalation over time. Uh, can't tell what in, you know how bad that might be, but uh, I think we have that covered in, in the hundred, and that is in the hundred and thirty-two million dollar budget. I, I am concerned about a reliance on the renewable energy fund for the solar arrays, since that's a, a smart, that's a uh, you know that's money to last that we have for ten years, and you know the classic center has a revenue source, and we have so many projects in there and there's a you know a commitment to addressing historical inequities in the plan we're looking at and so forth um and so i don't know what kind of money you're talking about there but i, I hope that we can review different financing options on that as well mayor if i may uh, if you could very briefly i've got several commissioners with questions yeah, all I wanted to say is we don't need those funds to be able to make the solar work. We can make it work without that. Um, that was just when you asked, is there anything else out there uh, that did come up? But I, the SEPA agreement as it stands right now will work just fine. And uh, you should be very proud because I believe this would be the largest solar array ever installed on the rooftops of any of your buildings. So. Uh, it's a pretty big deal. Got uh, Commissioner Davenport, and then I've got uh, Commissioner Edwards and Commissioner Denson lined up, and then I'll return to Commissioner Parker if there's no one else. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, I, I lower my hand. Okay, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Russell. Okay, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I move that we accept options A, B, and C. And if I can get a second, I'll discuss. Thank you. Second. Got a motion from Commissioner Edwards, second from uh, Commissioner Hamby. Go right ahead, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, I, you know, looking over these numbers, looking at uh, the agenda that's been prepared here, um, obviously this project is dealing with problems that are happening around the world. Um, I do think that we, we we absolutely need the canopy for the energy savings and for the aesthetics, but also just for the comfort of guests needing shade and shelter from rain. And, you know, we need the cushioned seats. 
So thankfully, with this change order that's being proposed, along with the other options, we are still coming below the of SPLOS that we approved on January 4, 2022. And so uh, I thank all the staff for putting this together and look forward to moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Denson. Thank you, Mayor. And yeah, I just wanted a couple of questions just to get some clarification on what we're talking about. And as it is, I think, kind of complicated, or at least to me. Um, so yeah, we have what we approved on uh, yeah January fourth was for to increase the total budget to 135, basically 0.7 million dollars, um, and we're asking for a change order here of of 8.95 million, which puts us I believe about 4.3 over the GMP. Um, I mean, my understanding here, right, is that we're not being asked to dedicate any additional revenue. We're not increasing the total budget. We're simply still operating within the budget that we already approved. And this is not to actually add any additional revenue, correct? Correct. Right. The top line remains the same. Uh, of course, we are uh, directing through one of these elements staff to prepare a special district. So there's a new revenue stream, but again, within that same top line. That's right. Mayor, and then we would return to the commission once that's been formulated for your final approval in that special tax district. Right. I, I, I guess my questions are mainly dealing with the uh, with the change order uh, component right now. Um, and so just trying to get this all wrapped around. I mean, if we were if we were to not totally fulfill this change order to, to the full degree, I mean, where would those savings go? That's within that we're not spending. If, if, does that question make any sense? I mean, what would we be saving that money for to do with it elsewise? I mean, because this is like money that's kind of locked up, I believe. Are you asking if if we if you didn't approve the eight million dollar change order, what would what would be the ramifications of that? Not what would be the ramifications. What is the point of us trying to find savings? With, with this, like, okay, so specifically with the uh, with with the canopy oh. or the sa or or the seats. Can um, I speak to that since that was a part of my motion earlier? I don't know if that was a staff. I don't think staff is looking for that. I think it was me. No, no, no. I no, I, I I I definitely get your I get I get your thing, Commissioner Parker. But I guess I'm I'm asking like since we're not adding. I mean, what will we? This money is is kind of locked in with with the bonds and with the spots and such. Uh, so you're you're saying that we'd move that money towards funding uh, some of the other more community benefits kind of ideas? You're asking me? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we have not had any commitment to any of those things yet in this process. Okay. Um, and then um, my Second question was on. I had to move off of this. Um, on the, uh, I, I, I was I was a little bit confused on the um, facts and issues number eight. And I wonder if staff could speak to this at all. Um, speaking to the unrealized VE savings, which I'm assuming is value engineering savings, um, and how the and it's saying the net proposed cost. Of these savings is 2.7 million. Um, can you explain that fact and issues number eight a little bit? Sure. There, the contract as it exists today has some um, contractor controlled contingencies built into it. When you're doing a GMP and a construction management at risk contract like this, it's it's not uncommon to have a various uh, contingencies, and and generally those one of those is almost always a contractor controlled contingency for as you go through, there are things that might come up that got missed uh, in the pricing. They're legitimate items required to be built, but might have been missed. Or in this case, material escalation between uh, pricing efforts. So the del the difference between the 4.6 and the 2.7, there are two different line items that some of those costs came out of. Um, the 1.4 came out of a contractor's contingency, and then the half million came out of material escalation. and. There's a very a long litany of things that make up 
that 4.6 total or the net 2.7. Uh, some of those, uh, i just give you one quick example because I know there's a lot of questions still. Yeah, it might have been uh, concrete, uh, the changes in concrete. And so between the 70 and 100% design, there was uh, an error found in the uh, subcontractor's pricing and that they had missed something that should have been included but wasn't. Uh, and so that portion of that came out of the contractor's contingency. They're eating that out of their contingency. And then part of it came out of material escalation because the cost of steel had gone up between the two different design efforts. And then a very small portion of that is coming out of the 2.7 uh, because the savings in the concrete wasn't as great as we thought it would be. And so that makes up those three different numbers. Okay. Okay. I think I get that. Um, I, I was finished by saying um, I, I do feel like I see the, uh, the, the, that the canopy is going to serve, I think, uh, a few purposes. Um, but uh, I guess, yeah, on the, on the seating, uh, I'm not totally sold, especially since, you know, whenever we, again, uh, you know, the classic center kind of came back originally and removed that seeing that that was something that was expendable, um, and especially since it's something that we could later on put in place, uh, which is different than uh, the canopy. Um, I, 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 I could be interested in, in holding off on the seating, that $300,000. If I could maybe just clarify one thing I said, you can come back and do the seating, but you couldn't replace the seating from what we put in to padded for the 300,000. You can, you can upgrade the plastic seats to the padded seats for 300. But if you put in the plastic and you decide later to come back, let's say a couple of years down the road and replace them with the padded seatings, then you got to buy all new seating. And that's Marcus helped me in the million, million and a half range. Yes. It's a big number for that that many seats. So now would be the time to do it if you're going to do it. Do you have any other questions before I move on to? Okay, good. All right. Um, Ovi, did I see your hand just a little bit ago? No, I don't have no hand. I'm good. I'm ready to vote. All right. I'll right, move back to Mariah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a final point on some of the points that I've been raising is that if you look at the project statement that's laid out in facts and issues, um, number one, um, community wellness initiatives can be included depending on costs and funding availability. And so I'm really hammering this home now and hope to continue to do so throughout our process in this project because though the, the project budget with these changes comes out to about the same as before today. Um, if we continue to move forward with using cost savings on things that improve user experience, but do nothing to you know, help the families in our community that haven't been able to return to work because they are childcare burdened and other things that are very pressing needs here in Athens, uh, we will get to the end and say, whoops, that would have been nice to do, but we just ran out of money. And so, um, if possible, to sort of get to Commissioner Denson's point just before me, if I can make a substitute motion to approve um, uh, options A, B, and C, less the three hundred thousand dollars for the seating, um, that would be rad. I'll, I'll second that motion. Right, I've got a substitute motion from Commissioner Parker, uh, second from Commissioner Denson to approve A, B, and C, less the $300,000 of seating costs, add, added seating costs. Any further input before we move through a roll call? Uh, Commissioner Myers. E easy question. What are the costs of the, like a ticket seat for one of these concerts that might happen? in there if i was going to be buying i mean what are you know i have no idea what the cost if i was i'm just saying if i spend 80 dollars on a seat i might like to have that be upset if i didn't have anything but a little plastic thing to sit on and, just to give a I, real dollar concert ticket cost these days you're probably going to see anything from 40 dollars on the low end to couple hundred dollars on the higher end. 
In, in addition, I just want you to think about the acoustics uh, throughout the venue. When there are no pads on the seats, it does dramatically change the acoustics throughout the venue. I'm good. All right. Any further questions before we get through a roll call? All right, uh, Commissioner Parker. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Denson. Yes. Commissioner Edwards. Mr. Mayor, just to be clear, this is on my motion that was on the floor. I apologize. This is on the substitute motion that removes the pads from the seating. That Commissioner Parker put forward right after yours. No. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Thornton, or excuse no. me, I apologize, I skipped. <laughs> Commissioner Myers. No. Uh, Commissioner Thornton. No. Commissioner Hamby. No. Uh, Commissioner Davenport. No. All right, uh, motion fails. We move to the original motion uh, from Commissioner Edwards. Uh, move back to a roll call. Commissioner Edwards. Yes. Um, Commissioner Myers. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Thornton. Yes. Commissioner Hamby. Yes. Commissioner Davenport. Yes. Commissioner Parker. No. Commissioner Denson. Yes. All right. M motion carries. All right. Uh, any further business, Manager Williams? No, Mayor, and I do appreciate everyone meeting uh, in this special called session to help the project progress. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, and please enjoy your next couple of weeks off. Thank you to the public who attended tonight as well virtually, and uh, wish you the very best. Thanks to our public. I members. move to adjourn. As well. All right. Second. Motion to adjourn from Commissioner Edwards. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second from Commissioner Hamby. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, y'all.